sunshine today. Isn't that wonderful? Dorothy, thank you. That was beautiful. Appreciate it very much. We are going to begin our worship service this morning by standing and sing, singing in the Purple Chorus book number 141. I will bless thee, O Lord. Number 141. Number 229, open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Are you ready to see him today?
Amen. Very good. Very nice. Great voices today. Great voices in praise. Number nine, I cast all my cares upon you. Lord, I lay all my burdens down at your feet. Number nine.
Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Let's give God some praise. Come on now. Amen. Let's give God some real praise. I mean, praise it like you really mean it. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior. Our Master, our Savior, our God in whom we trust. Amen. 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 You can't, you know, we couldn't praise God enough if we tried. Amen. And uh, I am just so grateful for all that he's done. We're certainly keeping, please, lifted up in prayer, all those that are on our sick and shut-in, but specifically um, Mary Ann Bath, who has had surgery this week, and I believe she is still at, I know she's still at Geisinger Hospital. First Lady and I went by to her uh, on last uh, Sunday after service, and we sat and visited with her, and it's funny because you expect to pick someone else's spirit up, but how do you lift it when they're already lifted, amen? amen. She had us in there laughing. So we are uh, on the move, and we're getting by and seeing people and able to visit them. And I would ask that you would just continue to pray for her, pray for Techie, um, who is uh, going to be doing uh, probably impending surgery shortly, if not already. And um, Ben uh, also, and then... Um, uh, Jeannie, who is away, uh, we're just keeping her in prayer. And also, First Lady said, thank you, Georgina. We'll keep Georgina lifted up in prayer. She had surgery. So there's a lot of people that really have been out because they're having surgery. And, of course, those that are traveling, we're asking that you would keep them lifted in prayer. And then also, uh, also besides that, too, your parents. Amen. Yeah, keep them lifted Amen. in prayer. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, choir. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand and join me in the singing of hymn number 322 in the blue hymnal, The Lord's Our Rock, in Him We Hide, a shelter in the time of storm, number 322. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time very much and please be seated. Good morning everyone. <coughs> I'd like to extend a warm welcome to each and everyone here today whether you are visiting us today on this lovely Sunday morning, or you're one of our lovely members here, welcome. A very happy birthday to one Miss Lisa Woolack on Monday, September 11th. Happy birthday to Lori Spencer and Tim Nolton on Saturday, September 16th. Happy anniversary to Tony and Gert Ritchie on Friday, September 15th. Following service today, there will be adult and teen Sunday school after church downstairs. There will be no Bible study this Wednesday, September 13th, and there will be no willing workers meeting September 12th. Um, please remember to keep our sick and shut-ins lifted up in prayer. Amen. If they could be here, I know they would be here. Amen. Amen. Who wouldn't want to be here worshiping and fellowshipping with each and one of us? Um, please remember to check for our updates on www.fbcpitson.com and also we are on Facebook and Twitter. Our handle is First Baptist Church 18640. And please remember to watch us on YouTube every Sunday. And there will be choir practice on Saturday, September 16th at 10. <coughs> Did I miss any announcements? No? We'll have a blessed Sunday.
Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. First of all, Amanda, it is good to have you here because she was in an accident the first day of school. Amen. Somebody ran into uh, the, her side door. And uh, if anybody's ever experienced an accident like that, she really shouldn't be here. Amen. amen. But God has blessed her and allowed her to be in the land of the living. Amen. 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 So I want to thank God for her. I'm going to uh, first let me thank uh, Glenn Henderson. Uh, Glenn um, really was a part of this in that um, anybody who remembers if we ever went to Mount Zion, um, the, uh, the uh, minister of music there, Brother Jesse Wade, mm -hmm. who played like, I'm telling you, he played like he's from the big city. Amen. Um, and wonderful man, wonderful family. Um, I got a call. Actually, she talked to me because their brother passed away last week or the week before, and they had the funeral. And I, while I was there, she said, I need to talk to you. My brother sent me her number, um, Bun Wade. And they gave their father's piano to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gave it to us. She said she just wanted to make sure. She said, I know my father would want you to have it. He meant the world. You meant the world to him? I said, no, he meant the world to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. um, and uh, she said, would you, would you take it? I said, absolutely. And called Glenn up, and Glenn said he would set something up. Text him yesterday, because their brother texted me. Glenn said, if you have the door open, I'll be there. And Glenn, I want to thank you, man, because it's, whether it's uh, moving the piano, whether <coughs> it's scraping and buffing the floor downstairs to get it ready with uh, our buddy, let me just say it that way, uh, and, and or, or whether it's bringing cheers from the high school that no one knows about so that we could have them here <laughs> for dinner and then taking them back for us and bringing tables for us, man, you've done that. And, and I say that because you just stepped your foot in the door and you never asked for anything. You don't want me to thank you, but I'm going to do it anyway. I want to tell you thank you because it doesn't go unnoticed. Amen. We have a wonderful men's fellowship. We've been dealing with Tony Evans' book called Kingdom Man. And we have been, uh, uh, my first week, they, they went over it the week before. Um, but we have started it, and I will be picking up probably some more books. If there's any men in here that want to come to men's fellowship we just had a men's fellowship this saturday so there won't be one the following saturday but i believe the saturday after that um you are welcome to come and it is teaching us not you but us what being a kingdom man is all about and it's a wonderful book wonderful pastor and i would encourage each man if you can give up an hour of your time on saturday 8 30 to 9 30 you really need to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen? You really do. You really do. Come on out. We'll get you out of here. If you got to come and leave early, it's okay. I realize Saturdays are busy for all of us. But I, I, I truly believe when you start from the ground up and put those building blocks and build on a surface that's not sand, but it's stable, you are building a church not just for today, but for tomorrow. Amen. And so I'm asking all of you and encouraging you, come on out. Be a part of it. It's easy, it would be easy for me to sit in front of you and make excuses not to be here Saturday after Saturday, Sunday after Sunday. I can do that. But what good would it do me or would it do you? Because I'd have no growth. But if you really want to grow, not just in church, but in your spiritual life, I'm telling you, let God really work on you. Amen? And it'll amplify that which you already have in you. And with that in mind, we as a men's fellowship will be going on our fishing expedition. That's right. We are going to New Jersey. We are leaving out of here early morning. Dwight, I talked to Dwight, and Dwight has kind of gotten everything together for us, and he told me that they like to leave around 2 and in the morning. And understand this here, because our boat leaves at 7, and any time you travel to New Jersey, we do not know what we are going to incur on the highways. So I'm asking any man, we already have several names down, if you want to go, it's $60 per man. And that's cheap. 
And we're asking that you, if you want to, we will need your money by next Sunday. And we'll be leaving here. We will have the food. We will have the drinks. And by that, I mean water, soda, Gatorade. I bet I have to dispel this. We're on TV, so I got to be careful how I say it. We'll have a boat full of people coming here. <laughs> and amen. Come on, you can clap your hands. It's okay. It's all right to laugh. We'll have all that. And we'll have sandwiches, and we're going to have a whole lot of fun. So I'm asking you, if you want to be a part of it and don't want to be on the end of, hey, here's what happened, and you had to see this, but you want to see it live, I'm telling you, come on out. So I'm going to ask if someone will come, and we're going to take this to the back table. If they'll lay that there. And this is, thank you, gentlemen. This will be for the sign-up sheet. If, if anybody wants to sign up, please put your name down. Um, we will need your $60 by next Sunday. But I also want to encourage you. Come to us privately. You can come to me. You can come to anybody that's in the men's fellowship. Uh, Dwight, uh, Joe, if you have an issue and you may not be able to afford all of it, any of it, come see us. Because we want you to go. <laughs> and trust me, we'll find a way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We'll find a way. Let me help you out. There's nothing wrong with saying, I don't have it right now, or I won't have it. And, and, but, but that does not, we don't want to discourage you from not going. This is a fellowship. We want you to have fun and enjoy it. I can't wait. I'm ready to get out there right now. I'm not even talking about catching the biggest fish or a fish. I just want to have fun and laugh and talk. Amen? Amen? So I want us to enjoy each other outside these four walls. Get a chance to fellowship. Talk with one another. Enjoy each other's company. Know what it's like to fellowship outside of here. And we will be doing more of that as we continue down the line. We are probably about five, eh, no, I'm sorry, eight to ten strong every other Saturday. But that's enough for me to have fun with. Because if you listen to us outside the church and we're in there laughing and talking, you thought we had a full room. Amen? So I appreciate every man that's dedicated and that comes every Sunday. And you are, and I want to tell you something. You tell me I teach you, but be encouraged. You're teaching me, and I'm learning so much from you, and I appreciate you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> if I didn't have all my senses, I think they laughing at us, man. I, I believe they just challenged us to catch something big. So I don't care. Listen, I don't care where we catch it, but if I got to go and get a cart from the Susquehanna all the way home, amen. We bringing something. We bringing something back here. <laughs> Uh, Carl wasn't here last week. I'd like to thank him for all the pictures from the Allen, the picnic, the kickball. We all saw Pastor's uh, skills on kickball. <laughs> several of us are I mean, you know how much of a fisherman you are. We're just wondering how good you are at bowling. Are you any good? Sure, I'll be any good at bowling. <laughs> I have a gift for you from Curry Yeoman across from Bishop uh, Holy Dick Niemer. Yes. Free bowling tickets. Thank you. Uh, Carl Zelinski was talking about bringing the, taking the youth out. So there these are these will be the coupons to use. Um, last but not least, and I, I'm trying to remember the date. And uh, Mr. Zelinski or your son, if you remember the date that he wants to take the youth out fishing, September. Oh, is he there? There he is. I knew he was here somewhere. Will you stand, please, and talk about this trip? <laughs> hey, before you even start. Take the pastor with you. To, to inform everyone that it was this coming Saturday, the 16th, Francis Slope, fishing for the children. Uh, we had some fishing poles that were donated by Dwight and some other gentlemen in the uh, in the congregation. George, uh, I believe there was some bait. Is there still some bait, Dwight? No, there's, there's some bait. So Kabasi. Saturday or early morning. I'd rather early morning because it's better fishing. Oh, yeah, early. <laughs> 
pick your time. What time would you like to go? 8 o'clock in the morning. If we could meet here, and then we can go to school to find out who we have, and then take it from there. So any, any kid that would like to, I'll, I'll set up a sign-up sheet back here, and I do apologize that it's late notice. Uh, but mothers, fathers, come join us. We'll have a good time. I would like to see Pastor here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to see my skills for sure. <laughs> Could you give me your phone number just in case there's a my phone number, yes, I'll, I'll set it back there. I'll, I'll give it right now. It's 570-239-5482. Please call me and we'll, we'll uh, have a good time on Saturday. Okay? All right, thank you. Amen. Amen. Listen, any youth, whether it's uh, I don't care who you are, if you know of any and they're not here today. Please call, uh, see Carl after church. Really, they've been putting this trip together for a while. They have the uh, donations. We really want to take our youth out and, and be about uh, really just fellowshipping with them where they can have a good time. We can have a ton of programs and offer a ton of things, but if we don't get the people out to them, what good is it having them? Amen? So I'm asking all of you to be a part of that. If it doesn't work this Saturday, I'm going to set something up again after the men's trip. And we'll do it. It's still warm in November. We can still get out and do some fishing. I'd like to see Mr. Joe Stender there because I know that he's a great person. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hey, and I want to let you know, Mr. Stender is already on my team for the ship, so don't <laughs> nobody try to steal him. That's right. He's on my team. Pastor's team. Team pastor. Joe Stender and pastor. <laughs> How many youth do we have here today, if we have any at all? Amen. Some young people. Well, whoever thinks they're young, raise your hand. And wherever you are, there you go. I'm glad you raised your hand. All right. I'm so glad you raised your hand. After service today, we have Sunday school immediately, so you have no excuse. I'll see you downstairs. And if you, we have an adult Sunday school class, we have a youth Sunday school class, we have a teen Sunday school class. If you do, and I know you do, fit in those categories, come on downstairs. Amen. And we want you to be a part of our Sunday school. Amen. That's it. Pastor's finished. We will now have, to, it is now time for our tithes and our offerings as our ushers shall come forth.
Father, I thank thee once again for all that you've done. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll bless this offering, bless the gift and the giver, that this offering might be used for the very purpose it was taken. These are all blessings we thank you for, and we do ask in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. And together, let us all say, amen. amen. We do better than that. Man, I sound like I had two people in here. Amen. amen. Morning, everyone. real quick. Glenn, thank you very much from the music department for your help. And God bless the family of Mr. Wade and those that remain. And may the piano being used here be an honor to him and what he meant to everyone. So thank you. A couple more things. Joe, um, if you start hearing the term first mate, <laughs> I don't know, you know, I mean, because, you know, if you're on the pastor's fishing team, there's a lot of bait cutting, um, hook, pulling fish off. So, you know, you might want to pray for Joe. And Jenny, please make some of that world famous fried chicken because these boys are going to be hungry when they get home. Uh, God bless you all. My doubts and my confusions cloud my mind. I've been lost in my own wisdom. I've been wrong. Take my hand and lead me back where I belong. Restore my soul in the valley.
God bless you all. Thank you. And uh, we're going to invest in some batteries for some microphones around here. So, so. Uh, if you would please stand and join me in the singing of hymn number 437 in the blue hymnal, I Must Tell Jesus All of My Trials. We'll sing all four verses, please, as we prepare for the morning message. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He never loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me over the world, the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Amen, 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 amen. One, both, both wonderful selections. We're blessed, amen? amen. We, are, we are blessed. We have, a, we have a duo, amen, here. And I don't, and I've talked about this before. Uh, it is a struggle trying to find people that are as dedicated as we have as our musicians here. Amen. And it is equally as, amen. And it's equally as difficult to find someone that can truly play, especially in this area. It's not like going to the city where you can find a whole lot. So I really appreciate uh, Sister Claproth and Brother Jay. And I don't care whether anybody ever says anything. I appreciate the two of you for what you do. I'm going to ask if you would turn with me to uh, 1 John. Not the Gospel of John, but the Epistle. 1 John, chapter number 1 and verse 5. 1 John, chapter number 1 and verse number 5. I'm going to read that in your hearing.
1 John chapter 1 and verse number 5. And it reads this way. It says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. I'm going to read that again to you. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Amen. You may be seated. Father, we thank thee for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. I pray that you hide this, your servant, behind the cross, that your word may come forth, that someone might come crying, what must I do to be saved, and that we would have an answer through your word. These and all blessings we thank you for, and we do ask in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. And together let all of us say amen. 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 I want to talk to you this morning about who is leading you. Right. Who is leading you? Three particular points. Number one, full joy. Full joy. Number two, what is the message? What is the message? And number three, the blood. Number one, full joy. Number two, what is the message? And number three, the blood. And again, who is leading you? Over the past couple of uh, weeks, I could say, uh, days, we've been hearing about the storm that has happened, Harvey. We've been hearing about Irma and the other storms that are impending. If you watched TV today, the news, you watched uh, Cuomo and uh, the different people on CNN that are standing there, look like they're getting ready to get blown away. And the water and the rains that are falling and coming down, trying to explain for everyone that if you're there, you need to leave. They said you'll never experience anything like this because they've never experienced anything like this before. This is the real deal. There's a young lady that in Storm Harvey, and they were a family, I believe, of five or six husband, wife, children. And they were trying to drive the van to safety. And they went through what they thought was low tide, enough to be able to get them through to the other side. However, they got into the waters, and no doubt the vehicle stalled out. And everyone in the family, other than the driver who was able to escape from the window, died. I thought I'd share with you this morning that sometimes our troubles really aren't troubles. Because until you peer over to the other side and know what it is really to have absolutely nothing, you really have no idea. Amen. Young lady, 37 years old, had cancer, refused treatment because she was pregnant and ready to give birth. And because she refused treatment, she died, but the baby lived. Amen. 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 Those are real things that people deal with and struggle. So under full joy, what, what is full joy? First of all, the first epistle here that John wrote was a letter, and it was addressed in a setting in which some people in the local church had departed the fellowship. And John is writing a letter to them, encouraging them, letting them know of things and about the light, about not having the light, what it is to have light in your life versus what it is to have darkness in your life. And I don't know, some I'm sure if you ask me say, I don't know what darkness is. I can tell you, I know full well what it is. Yeah. Amen. Been there, been a part of it, been in it, know what it's like, but can't wait till you peer back the screen just enough to get just enough light to know that I can come out of what I'm in. And if you've never felt it before, I would never wish it on anyone at all. But when you get in darkness like you almost feel, and this is a different darkness now, and I'll, I'll explain the variance, but you would that you had never found your way in there. And sometimes we don't even ask for it. Things happen in life that we don't ask for, and they're troubling, they're difficult. But what I love about God, he's the kind of God that will use those bad things in your life bring you through 
and give you the strength that you thought you didn't have to be able to come through. No phone calls coming through. Friends aren't around. People that you thought would be, they're not there. People forgot about you weeks later and thought you're okay when you really aren't. Got the TV on and you're not even listening to it. You're looking through the TV thinking about how am I going to make it through. I'll tell you how. It's no one but God that grips you up. Come on, somebody. Drive the tears from your eyes and let you know while, you're, while the TV's on and you're not watching it, I'm going to talk to you and let you know. I'm going to speak right to your heart and let you know. I know what you're going through, but I'm the God of your salvation that I promise I'd always be to you. And I want to let you know I have not left you nor forsaken you. And I'm talking to you and blessing you right now in the midst of what you're going through. And what I love about it is this here. God doesn't meet you when you come out. He meets you before you even ask for help. That means when you're the lowest of low. And let you know, there's nobody here but me. But I'm going to bring you up, out, and through. But when God brings us through out of our darkness... We ought to dance like David danced. We ought to clap our hands, shout and worship and say, Lord, I just want to say thank you in the midst of where I am right now just to let you know I appreciate what you did for me. Because sometimes we don't do that enough. When you have full joy, you are full. Like, I mean full. You can't take nothing else in. You're filled to your cups filled with and to capacity. You're overjoyed. Not that kind of joy that comes from someone giving you money. Not that kind of joy that someone gives you a car, a housing, because that's temporary. We look at it, at, at it as it's eternal because, well, I'm going to live in the house for a long time. Yeah, but sometimes we got to check out of here. So it's only temporary. But the full joy I'm talking about is when Christ comes in your life, you can have, I'm going to say it like this here, because I heard someone say it on TV. Devil, you can have my money, you can have my clothes, you can have my house, you can have my cars, but you can't have me. Because who has me is God, and once God has me, can't nobody else take me. It's something that when you get this joy, you smile and you're so resilient that no matter what news hits you, you still can smile knowing, I know it's bad. I know people wondering why I'm smiling right now because they think either one or two things, either I don't care or I lost my mind. But I just want to let you know I will smile all the way through because I know that my Savior is with me. I know, I know as sure as I'm going, I hear all the whispers. Soon as you go through something, people are talking about you. Well, they've been through some storms before, but they'll never get through this one. This looks like it took the bottom out of them, took the wind from their wings. They're not making it out of this one. And as they're saying it, I'm just, I don't get mad. I'm just encouraged because I say they just don't understand. And I'm smiling, continue to walk through because I know what God is doing in my life. And I know sometimes people look and say, well, they just don't care. Because they smile and laugh and they're talking like nothing's going on in their lives. But they don't understand this joy is not a joy that's at the top of the glass. Because when you pour cream in a dark cup of coffee, it's got to take root on the bottom before it hit the surface. And the joy that I have has got to take root deep down in my soul. And when it starts to come up, it bubbles over, it takes root, and it allows you to smile despite the things that are happening in your life. And I am encouraged that God is still the head of my life. And no matter what happens, God already knows about it. And he's going to take me through. That's what a songwriter wrote. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me on. Let me stand. I am tired. I am weak. I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Precious Lord to lead me on because he knew we would go through some dark times but he said if you just let me guide you don't choose your own source let me lead you through there's some rough waters and terrain ahead it looks like you won't make it but just let me lead you it's hard to do but try to enjoy the ride because when I take you you're going to know it was nobody but me 
that's bringing you through because you couldn't do it on your own. It's that full joy where I'm full, I'm filled, I'm overjoyed, and I am complete. Can nothing else complete you like Jesus? When you make a cake, if you miss any ingredient, that cake's not complete. Fell down in the oven, you mad. People that are over your house, they mad. You tell them to go to the grocery store, pick up a cake, it's too sweet, nobody wants it. It's nothing like having that cake. Parents used to make a cake, asking for the recipe, well, I don't have one. Because they didn't want to give it to you, number one, but also they had it in their mind. A pinch of this, a little flour. Come on, a little yeast. Make this thing right, a little sugar. Mix it up. What'd you put in there? Oh, nothing. They around here, they got something hidden over there, throw it in there, a little pinch. They don't want to tell you it. But when it comes out, you know when you walk in that house, ah, oh, man, it's Christmas or Thanksgiving once again. And that's what God does. He's got all the ingredients to give us what's known as full joy. Where we're overfilled. We are full. We are complete. We are joyful, satisfied in Christ. And only he can do that. And the ingredients are God the Father, God the Son. And you got to have God the Holy Spirit. Because when we are dealing with issues here on this life, it's the Spirit that's in us, that comforts us, that talks to us, that teaches us, that leads us, and that guides us. That's why, if you ever see me and I'm on the road, looks like I'm talking to myself. Well, Jay, I don't have a piano, I can't play, and you swear out I don't have a note. Because I'm singing all off key, but I'm not worried about how it sounds. I'm just glad about how I feel. I'm just riding to work. When I get there, I can't believe I'm there. Because all the way I'm singing, letting others know I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And I want to get to the throne. Take me to the throne. Take me to the king. Because there's something in me that lets me know I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm full. That's why we have. Why do you have this full joy? You're happy in knowing that your sins are forgiven and that you are able to pray for or pursue God's will for your life. It is God who completes us. It's that believer's joy. He makes us whole and he speaks life into what was once dead. Because I was not only dead to sin, but I was just dead. Because when I thought I was having fun, when I thought my life was complete, Jesus was busy smiling and laughing on the throne. God was, because he knew your life ain't complete. You have no joy. You don't even know what joy is. But I'm going to show you. And he slows us down just enough where we get a real taste of what life is really about. Yeah. What do I mean? When you start going through some storms, remember Reverend Williams told me, you're going to get enough of running to the mailbox. I couldn't wait to get my magazine. And then I realized real life hit. I don't want to see the mailbox. You got bills. Come on, somebody. You got to, well, yeah, they want you to come down to the post office. You got to sign for this one. And you know, oh, my God, what is that? So real life hits you, but then you realize that I've got to depend on more than what I'm depending on. Because money ain't cutting it and the job is never eternal. But I've got to be able to depend on who I really love and who matters in my life. And that is first and foremost God himself. And I know sometimes people get this thing where they say, well, all I need is God. And yeah, you're, you're right, but God puts people here on earth for a reason. Come on, somebody. I don't need no, no. He puts them here for a reason that we would have people, we would have friends. Come on, someone. We would have spouses. We would have loves of our lives. And then God begins to put the seasoning on everything that you have that was once bland in your life. And you can smile and realize, Lord, I know what it is right now to be satisfied in you because you have made my life whole and complete. I was dead, but you've given me life. Number two, what is this message that everyone talks about? And it's, it's not hard. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. And sometimes we overthink things, overlook things. And he's trying to let us know that it's really about loving God, having Christ in your life, 
This is more than just a religion. Listen, knock that out the way right now. It's the, we, we, I'm sure all of us have enough religion in us to know what it's like. We know the steps to take. We know what to do. We know how to act, what to do. But when real life hits you, you'll throw that manual out the window and you'll get the real manual. Because that manual only tells you how do you, how do you act in church. Sit proper. Say amen every now and then. Don't make too much noise because everybody will look at you and make a spectacle of yourself. Don't laugh. Don't smile till you get outside. That's the manual. But I want to give you the real manual, which tells you when you come in, you ought to come in praising and worshiping God. If you come in crying, God will wipe the tears from your eyes. If you come in sad, he makes me glad because he's my friend. If you come in thinking it's the end, God said, well, I knew the beginning when it was your end, and I'm going to make everything all right for you. So it helps us to understand we don't have a clue what real joy and completeness is until we have Christ in our life. And then we begin to understand all I need is Jesus in my life. Silver and gold have I none, but such that I have, I give unto thee. All that other stuff doesn't matter. What matters is Christ. The apostle John lived alongside Christ. You remember the three? They were real close, Peter, James, and John. They lived right there. They knew about him. He knew things about him. I'm sure the others didn't because they were in what was called the inner circle. And so they were privy to some things that others may not have been privy to. And they had a real relationship with Christ. And I would ask you all, think deep within. Do you really have a real relationship with Christ or is it just that relationship on the surface? Because a real relationship with Christ is not just I'm saved like I've repented and I'm saved now. But it's getting down to the reality of I feel it in my soul. Because when I didn't have a song to sing, he gave me a song. When I didn't have a word, he put a word in my heart that I could recall it and know you in some tough times right now. In other words, you're in a foxhole. But don't worry about it because as things happen, I got you covered. When you're going and don't know where your next dime's coming from, reach in your pocket to buy a coffee, you don't have two dimes to run against one another. That's what I'm saying, that when you have nothing, he's everything to you. So that when you get something, you'll realize that something is nothing because of something that's something and that everything in my life is Jesus Christ. And he's consistent. At some point, darkness creeps in our lives. The darkness that they're talking about in the Bible is that sin nature. All that is in or was in us. But there's other darknesses that creep into our lives because they're calling our names, wanting us to go back out there again. Whatever we've come from, and, 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 and I want everybody to understand it here, don't smile like you wasn't out there. Maybe you weren't there when I was there, but we all were there. And we came from something. And every now and then we hear the echoes bemoaning our names, wanting us to go back out where we were. And I tell the young men in this church and our fellowship, whether you want to believe it or not or whether you like it or not, because I'm not talking to you from a standpoint of this is just a feel-good sermon. But every now and then you hear calling your name and you feel weak and compelled. Maybe I can just step out one time. Come on, somebody. And you realize that my wholeness and my completeness is predicated on keeping Christ in my life, but realizing every now and then you'll have what's called your moment. And it's a moment that you have it that you'll find out and you'll get down to the real, like my dad used to say, nitty gritty, and really find out how much Christ do you have in you. Is it just on the surface or has he taken root in your life? And that's when you realize the pull is not stronger than the anchor. You don't get it, but I'll help you out. I was watching the cameras and they had this boat and it was tied down. It's in Florida and the waters were just rocking and reeling and turning it upside, wanting to turn it upside down. Water filled it to where it was bored down on one end. But the, 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 work, the ropes were still there, and it was being tossed and turned. And Cuomo, Chris Cuomo said that 
as the wind was blowing, it was blowing so hard that the fronds from the palm tree hit him. And he thought, that's nothing. But one of the anchors told him, oh, it's something because they don't move. He said, so when they start falling apart, it's time to roll. And I need you to understand something that we may rock and reel when the storms hit your life. And the pool may be strong. But there's nothing like having that anchor, which is Christ Jesus in your life. And it's not that you're not going to move because it may want to pull you this way. And you start thinking about, well, I might be, nah, nah, nah. But you know, you're rooted and grounded in Jesus. We rock, we reel, we roll, but we don't fall to a point where God doesn't pick us back up again. My soul! And I say it like that because I feel it in my soul. My soul is anchored in Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's why my faith looks up to thee, Calvary. It's something about Christ that when you get into something and he brings you out, you don't forget where you came from. Because when you speak to people, you don't want to speak like you're on some plateau, like you were never affected by the things of the world. That's why I let people know, Dwayne, I've been there. I've done that because I'm not some kind of fairy tale story where God just planted me here and I've never been through it. But when you've been through storms of life before, when you've suffered a while before, and when God picks you up, you were just grateful that God brought you out of somewhere and gave you what you needed. We struggle through this life all the time and then we want to Sit back and realize, and know, darkness does hit us. Because it's real life. We're real people dealing with real things. Every time you see someone, you know, you don't always want to smile. Every time you go in the store, somebody see you, you ducking and hiding behind a can of tomato soup because you don't always want to talk. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You know, we want to come in church and pretend that we're somebody that we're not. The reality of it is you don't always want to talk. But God put something in your heart to sustain us and bring us through real storms of life. Reverend Dr. Brittingham, sometimes people don't believe when you talk to them about things because you share some stories with them and they look at us as though we're on Mars and we're really not on Mars. But every now and then, God allows us to step out of where we are to be able to see some things. And that sometimes we can share it, and sometimes we can't. And I don't mind sharing it when I can, because I want to get it off of me and someone else. But it's when God says you can't share it, that now I start getting nervous, because now I got to hold it. Until he said, now you can talk about it. Because you look back and you say, like, Lord, why are you entrusting me with this when I can't tell somebody? He said, hold your peace. When it's time, I'll let you talk about it, but not right now. But it's something God gives us and instills with us. Darkness can hit us at any time, any moment. And it could change our life till we realize that things are different now. Because darkness is powerful, but God is all powerful. Yeah, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah, he is. He's real. Justifies to them who is the, to him who is the light, and they would have every opportunity to dispel darkness in their lives. Because we can dispel it because we know we have the anchor who is in our life, and that anchor holds us where we are. Yes, the message is that God is light, and in him is absolutely no darkness. None. None at all. Third, and I'm done, the blood. We always used to hear old songs, you know, the blood of Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood, come on, someone. You remember all the, the wonderful songs that they used to talk about, they used to sing. And they wouldn't just play them because back then, you may have had a piano, but it just didn't work. It was so out of tune, you didn't know which note was being played other than the pianist trying to play the right note. Even though he was playing the right note, we couldn't afford to get a tune, so you heard what you heard. But what you heard was, and they just pat their foot, clap their hands. 
and you just sit there as a child listening and you recall those things and our parents always told them, boy, girl, you better listen because at some point you're going to need this. And we would laugh thinking, I'll never need that. I don't know what they're talking about because we thought it was funny. But we realized at some point, you look up now and say, you're right, I needed it. Come on, somebody say amen. Yeah. We didn't have the voice like they had, but we remember the words, the blood of Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. And we remember those songs. We, you and I, can't have fellowship with each other unless we are walking in the light. Walking in the light is living consistent with God's commandments, his word, and his character. That doesn't mean that I'm perfect, but being consistent in what we say, what we do, how we walk. That's why around Christmas, but they need to play this song all year long. We'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Come on. That's what he wants, that we have those things. Remember this here. Now, I'm going to read one scripture, and I'm done. Revelation, Revelation 1, and I want to read for you 5 and 6. And I want to share this with you. And it simply reads this. And from Jesus Christ, who is faithful, is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Remember that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that is still relevant today. We, we talk about the blood of Christ as though it, it's no longer relevant, but it still is because it has healing power, miracle working power. It lifts us from where we are. See, when I talk about that, it just makes me happy, even if I'm the only one getting happy. I fall and roll on the floor right now because I just feel it in my soul because I've been there before where it was just, it seemed like it was just me and God because no one understood where I was. I come out and smile. And everybody thought, he all right? But really deep down, I wasn't. But it was God in my life who allowed me to walk through the storms. And no, it wasn't me, but it was nobody but God. When you feel it in your soul and you know God the way I do, who's the head of my life, it lets me know every time I hear his name mentioned, every time I call on God, I got to smile some kind of way because I know the God I serve is worth smiling for. He's worth talking about. He's worth loving. He's worth dancing for. He's worth shouting for. And he's worth raising my hands for. Letting people know if you can't smile about anything else, when we mention the name of Jesus, you ought to smile the rest of the day. Something about that. Oh, God. He's an awesome God. He really is. Yeah, that's right. You go ahead and thank him. He's an awesome God. And that's why we talk about he is, he's the light of the world, salt of the earth. There's something in us that he's put in us where that light is supposed to reverberate from us to others, where people can see without us even having to talk about it or mention it, something different about you. Because I share this with you and I'm done? When you carry Jesus with you, the things you shouldn't have, now you get it. The, the places that you go when you shoot first in line for whatever reason, you don't even know. We were at the airport one time, and Sherelle and I were in line, and they're trying to usher us up. And, and she's like, well, I, I said, don't say nothing. Come on, man. I'm like, just come on. Keep on walking, right? Because they, they saying, come on. She's like, no. Nah, nah. I'm like, come on. Let's sit up there now. We stand in line. She's like, well, why don't we have to take off our shoes? I'm like, I don't know, but just get in there. Go on in there. Let's walk through the line and get in there. It's the favor of God that God gives us in our lives that puts his face we don't deserve to be. And he blesses us. And I'm just saying, I'm saying that whatever God's doing, let's just keep on walking. Get what we got to get to because it's God that blesses us. It's only God. Only God. And that's why I love God so much. He gives me favor. Gives you and I favor that when we shouldn't get it, 
He's like, I will make sure that my son, my daughter, my children have what they need. Keep on going. I will put somebody in your way. And when they talk to you, I want you to answer them properly and keep on walking because you're going to get exactly what you need and then some. We wonder sometimes, where does it come from? Because I thought that we, we can't really afford this. And I'm, I, and I'm saying to myself, I know we can't, but it's God. Because God puts things in our way, gives us what we don't deserve, moves mountains for us, and blesses us. And I want to encourage you today. I don't know what you're going through or what you may be dealing with, but the same God that's in my life is the same God that's in your life. And I want to encourage you that if you keep on striving, that God is not going to because he's already blessing you. But he'll even bless you further that as you walk, people know who you are. They won't talk around you the same way they used to. They won't say things around you. You may think, oh, they're no longer my friends. No, you're yeah, your friends, but they really respect you now because they just won't do certain things around you anymore. It changes everything about your life. And you can no longer say, oh, don't worry. I'm still the same person. No, you're not. You will never be the same again. And maybe there's someone else here today. Someone here today, you've never repented. You've never given your life.